The Blackmagic Cinema Camera, our new camera by the way, very excited, has been on the market long enough now that I'm not going to spend a bunch of time talking about the specs, other than a few key ones here. It has a 2.5K sensor, intended to be downscaled to deliver sharper than normal 1080p or 2K. It's got 13 stops of dynamic range, which basically amounts to less detail lost in the highlights and lowlights. And it can shoot in uncompressed Cinema DNG RAW, Avid DNX HD, and Apple ProRes versus AVC HD, which is what we're stuck with on our FS700 unless we use an external recorder. It includes a key for DaVinci Resolve, which is otherwise a thousand dollar piece of software, which is pretty darn cool. And it comes in a very pretty box, which won't matter one fish's nipple to most people, but I like boxes, so there you go. They're great at box design. Now, they're great at other things too. Blackmagic's design philosophy is a little bit different from other companies. They emphasize building what we can versus what the market will be willing to buy for a given price. And they emphasize open standards rather than closed proprietaryville ones. In fact, one of the most notable things about this camera for me is a great example of that. And that's the use of two and a half inch PC SSDs for recording. Standard computer SSDs are probably probably one of the only relatively inexpensive mediums that is capable of delivering strong enough performance to handle the massive 150 megabytes per second data rate required by 12-bit RAW 2.5K recording. While other recording solutions sometimes do use 2.5-inch SSDs, Convergent Design is one of them, most other companies choose to use firmware to lock down recording media to proprietary drives, which deliver consistent performance, sure, but are much more expensive. Blackmagic takes an open approach and allows you to use whatever SSD you want, which when you consider that a 256 gig drive holds only about 30 minutes of raw footage is pretty nice, but this open approach has some drawbacks for them and allowing a customer to put drives with inadequate performance in the camera will lead to dropped frames in the footage and a bad customer experience for which Blackmagic could easily be blamed. Which leads us nicely into the second part of this video, which is both, I guess, a, a feature for Kingston's high HyperX 3K SSD and a bit of a public service announcement. Now Kingston was kind enough to send us over three 480 gig drives for our recording needs. This will let us shoot about three hours of uncompressed raw footage without offloading to a PC, which is great. And in exchange, all they wanted was for us to talk about why their SSD is great for use with this camera, which is easy because it's right on Blackmagic's validated drive list. So there you go, yay, moving on. No, seriously, I should probably give some background as to why it's on there. HyperX 3K drives deliver great performance in this use case because they use real-time data compression to take the large files that you produce while filming and to turn them into something smaller on the fly before committing them to the flash chips on the SSD. This is actually similar to how other video compression standards like H.264 work, except for one major difference. When you read the data back off of a HyperX 3K drive, it decompresses it on the fly again, delivering the full quality file to you without you ever noticing that it was stored in a compressed form. This technology is perfect here because uncompressed raw footage is right in the wheelhouse of Sandforce controller based SSD drives, allowing them to perform pretty near optimally. And of course, they're just standard PC SSDs, so the same tech works in your computer as well. On the back, we find a 5 inch 800 by 480 capacitive touchscreen that can be used for uh, camera settings playback and review, uh, metadata entry, and its large size is actually another example of Blackmagic's because we can attitude. Truthfully, a five inch display doesn't cost much more than a three inch display, so they put it on. Way to be. With that said, the BMCC isn't perfect. The on-screen controls are not as granular or as fast to adjust as our main camera, the Sony FS700, with its deeper settings and reprogrammable hardware buttons. But considering that I could buy three Blackmagics and a lens for each for the price of a single FS700 and a lens, and it delivers better image quality out of the box, it's pretty darn compelling. Although, the FS does have slow-mo, built-in ND filters, and with the firmware upgrade and a third-party recorder, pulls ahead in image quality and can record in 4K. 
So just something to bear in mind. Uh, last things to show on the camera are, of course, mounts on the top for any accessories you might have, straps on the right hand side. Oh yeah, that SSD slot where you go ahead and pop a two and a half inch SSD in there for your recording needs. On the bottom, we've got ventilation. Yes, it is actively cool. There's actually a fan inside this bad boy. And then last but not least is the record button up there on the front that I never actually mentioned. Now. To close out this video where undoubtedly there are many folks who didn't make it this far in and left comments underneath wondering why we could possibly need this camera for unboxings, I'll leave some footage here from some of the projects that we've done that aren't unboxings, where it would have been nice to have a B camera or a little bit more control in post-production than the stock AVCHD recording of the FS700 allows. So we do do other things than unboxings and we will put this camera to good use. And I think that's pretty much it, guys. We're really excited about having it. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment and let me know, you know, something. Tell me what kind of fish is your favorite to eat. And then as always, guys, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.